This American punk rock band formed way back in 1986 by vocalist and guitarist Billy Joe Armstrong and bassist Mike Dern. For much of their career, the band was a three-piece with drummer Trey Cool. Trey Cool replaced their former drummer John Kiffmeyer in 1990 prior to their recording of the band's second studio album. Here are 25 facts about Green Day. Number 25. Billy Joe posted on Twitter that all the songs from the Thousand Hours 7-inch are about the same girl. Number 24. The band's name comes from a term referring to a day spent smoking pot, hanging around, and doing absolutely nothing. The band were joint smokers since puberty and Billy Joe got his nickname, Two Dollar Bill, from selling joints at that price at his high school. It is widely reported that when the boys went to their high school principal to say that they were dropping out to become a full-time band, the principal observed that would be a green day in hell before they amounted to anything. Number 23. Billy Joe Armstrong is actually named Billy and not William, although reportedly his birth certificate mistakenly says Billy with a Y. Trey Cool was born Frank Edwin Wright III, hence the nickname Trey. Mike Dirnt's real name is Michael Ryan Pritchard. An interesting fact about the members of Green Day is that they were all born during the same year, 1972. Number 22. Billy Joe posted on Twitter that their first show with John was October 1988. We opened for Nasal Sex, Sewer Trout, and Crimp Shrine in Davis, California at a Vets Hall. Number 21. Billy Joe Armstrong wrote Good Riddance as early as 1990, but didn't bring it to the band's attention until the Dookie Sessions. They ended up not using it because it was so different from the rest of their material. It was not until two albums later, when Green Day was recording Nimrod, that the song was finally included on the album. Another interesting fact about the song is that it was the official theme for the PGA Tour in 1998. Number 20. They played both Lollapalooza and Woodstock 1994. At their Woodstock gig, a mud fight broke out between the band and the audience. The audience won, Dirt ended up losing his front teeth. Number 19. Billy Joe's first guitar was a cherry red acoustic instrument that his father bought him. At the age of 11, he got his first electric guitar from his mother. Armstrong nicknamed the guitar Blue. The guitar was used extensively during touring and it is featured in the videos for Basket Case and Longview among others. Number 18. Mike Turnt was adopted. His adopted parents got divorced when he was young. Number 17. Billy Joe's father died of cancer when Billy was 10 years old. Before he died, he gave Billy Joe his first guitar, Blue. Number 16. For Green Day's first U.S. tour in the early 90s, they rode around the country in an old bookmobile, a mobile library. Trey's father converted the bookmobile into a tour bus and also served as the band's driver. Number 15. Every member in Green Day has tattoos, but they all have the letters E, B, P, M somewhere on their bodies, meaning East Bay Punk Mafia. Number 14. During Green Day's early years, Billy Joe Armstrong used to have a nose ring. He ended up having to remove it because somehow it kept getting caught on his guitar. Number 13. Billy Joe posted on Twitter that 39 Smooth was named after my brother. He turned 39 the day we recorded that LP, December 29th, 1989. Smooth was a stoner thing between me and Mike. We couldn't decide to call it 39 or smooth, so we went with both. First 7 inch was 1000 hours, LP was 39 smooth, second 7 inch was slappy. Got it? Number 12. The first instrument Trey played was violin when he was 9 years old. Number 11. Billy Joe Armstrong and Mike Durant played their first gig together in 1987, on October 17th. The pair took the stage at Rod's Hickory Pit in Vallejo, California, where Billy's mom worked. Number 10. The original pressing of Green Day's breakthrough album Dookie had the character Ernie from Sesame Street on the back cover. But on later pressings, Ernie has been airbrushed out, supposedly for fear of litigation. Number 9. Billy and Mike originally called their band Sweet Children. Supposedly it was their drummer John Kiffmeyer who suggested the name Green Day. Number 8. On Green Day's cover of Operation Ivy's Knowledge, the part at the beginning that is said backwards says, let's get personal when played forwards. Number 7. Just like with Good Riddance, Billy Joe Armstrong wrote Wake Me Up When September Ends years before it was finally released on American Idiot in 2004. Armstrong wrote the song about the death of his father, who passed away from cancer in September 1982. 
Number 6. Billy Joe recorded and released his first single, Looking for Love, at the age of 5 on Fiat Records. The first song he wrote and then recorded was, Why Do You Want Him, when he was 12 years old. Number 5. In 2015, the band were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, with pop punk band Fall Out Boy inducting the band at the ceremony on April 18th. To celebrate, Green Day performed a two-hour-plus show at the House of Blues in Cleveland two days before the ceremony, featuring an hour-long set as their original Sweet Children incarnation, complete with original drummer John Kiffmeyer performing with them the first time in well over two decades. They also invited Rancid singer Tim Armstrong up to play some songs, including the Rancid song Radio that Billy Joe Armstrong had co-written for the band back in 1993. Number 4. Billy Joe posted on Twitter that A lot of songs became about drinking and life's pressure around Nimrod era. I was feeling like a vague person in 1997. As do most people feel vague in their mid-twenties. You're just trying to figure out where the damn beer gut came from. Number 3. If you look closely on the Nimrod CD, you can see that all the words that are scratched out in the entire booklet simply say, Delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this over and over again. Number 2. On the front cover of Insomniac, in the flames, there are hidden pictures. You can find a naked woman, three fairies, a skull, and several other ghostly faces. And lastly, number 1. The house where they filmed Longview wasn't only inhabited by the band, it was also lived in by several other people, and it was the basement to a real house. And in the kitchen, the pipes were so low that they would hit their head on them and it only had about one bedroom. Thanks for making it to the end of my video. If you like these kind of fact videos, please subscribe to hear more in the future. I like to post new content all the time, so stay tuned. Thanks again, and please don't forget to hit the thumbs up. I'll see you next time.